Okay, what we are seeing uh, this year and probably carrying forward in the next couple of years is that the change of uh, landscape, especially on the buyer side, we've seen a lot of uh, new countries have been added to the list of uh, importing countries and a whole host of emerging buyers have joined now the, the, the fleet of purchasing and importing LNG. So in that sense, LNG world is no longer a very exclusive clo uh, closed uh, uh, club. So now with all these new hosted buyers, the buyers, uh, the sellers probably need to uh, listen more carefully about the new demand, the new uh, challenges and uh, a need of, of the uh, buyers' uh, uh, physical challenges of, of their uh, markets or infrastructure. In the medium to longer run, what I would like to expect is a more efficiency in the midstream sector. So, for example, from liquefaction to shipping to regas. I mean, how to lower that cost in order for the cheaper gas to, to pass through to the end users. So, in that sense, the industry players and financial players, logistical players, as well as the, the uh, uh, governments of the, uh, of the gas uh, consuming countries need to work on that to allow the cost pass through and lower the end user prices. Once you have a lower cost of transport, liquefaction and regas, you can actually ex expect uh, gas to be more uh, competitive in their, uh, in their in the comp uh, competition with uh, uh, oil products and uh, even coal. Yeah. If, for example, in the, in the power sector in China, as well as transport sector, and then to make gas more competitive. Oh, well, I, um, I came yesterday and attended the, uh, the pre-conference workshop, which I learned a lot. And uh, there was one of the workshops that the, uh, the presenters put us in the buyers and sellers group. So we tried to negotiate the SPA, which was a lot of fun. And I actually learned a lot, you know, being already thought I knew quite a lot about the industry, I still learned a lot. So it was fun. Yeah, I liked it. I hope to see it more. Mm -hmm.